All right, students, let's get started. So today we're gonna to cover what are the hamstring muscles? What are their origins, insertions, and actions? So first, we have the ilium. This is part of the pelvis bone. We have the femur, we have the tibia, and then we have the fibula. Now on the femur, we have the greater trochanter. This is really easy to palpate. All you have to do is just touch the side of your hip and just rub around. You should be able to feel that greater trochanter. Here we have the lesser trochanter. This is the ischium. On the ischium, we have this round hole, which is known as the obturator foramen. And the obturator foramen is where nerves and blood vessels pass through. Now on the ischium, we have the ischial tuberosity. This is going to be an attachment site for many of the hamstrings that you see here. Now, this is the hip joint. It is a ball and socket joint, which gives us the greatest amount of movement any type of joint can achieve. Now, the ball of this ball and socket is the head of the femur, and the socket is the acetabulum, which is on the lateral pelvis. It's the socket right here, and it is known as the acetabulum. So it is the acetabulofemoral joint. I've also seen it depicted as a coxal joint, C-O-X-A-L. So if you see these words interchangeably, just know that they are the same thing. Okay, make sure you know both of them. Acetabulofemoral joint and coxal joint. Then this one is the largest joint we have. It is the tibiofemoral joint. It is the knee joint. And it's just a hinge joint. The articulating surface of the femur glides over the surface of the tibia. And as a result, we get flexion and extension at this joint. So make sure you understand the different names of the joints and different bony landmarks. So the first muscle we're gonna cover is the biceps femoris. And it's this muscle right here. Now real quick, this is the posterior view. And the origin of the biceps femoris long head is on the ischial tuberosity of the ischium. So this is the ischial tuberosity. And then the short head is on the linea aspera of the posterior femur, so right here. And these two heads, the long head and the short head, form a tendon. And this tendon inserts on the head of the fibula. And its actions are flexion at the knee, at the tibiofemoral joint, extension at the hip, so extension here, at the acetabulofemoral or coxal joint, and also laterally rotates at the hip and knee when it is flexed. Okay, so flexion at the knee, extension at the hip, and laterally rotates the hip and the knee when it is flexed. Biceps femoris. Next we have semitendinosus. Its origin is the ischial tuberosity, and it inserts proximal on the medial surface of the tibia. So right here on the tibia, the medial surface. And its actions are flexion at the knee, at the tibiofemoral joint, it flexes, it helps flex the knee. Extension of the hip at the acetabulofemoral or coxal joint, so extension at the hip. And then it immediately rotates at the hip and knee when it is flex. Semimembranosis. Its origin is the ischial tuberosity. Its insertion is the medial condyle of the tibia, and its actions are to flex at the knee, extension of the hip, and then immediately rotates at the hip and knee when it is flexed. So let's go ahead and cover this real quick and more in depth. Now these are the biceps femoris. This is the long head. This is the short head. Long head originates here at the ischial tuberosity. Short head originates here at the linea aspera of the posterior femur. And they create a tendon here, both of them, that attaches and inserts onto the head of the fibula. Okay, so this is in the posterior compartment of the thigh. It is lateral. So it makes sense that it laterally rotates at the hip and the knee, and when it is in a flexed position. Now let's look at semitendinosus and semimembranosus. These are on the medial side of the posterior compartment of the thigh. So it makes sense that when these contract, it medially rotates the hip and knee when it is in a flexed position. Now look here, notice how these two muscles lay on top of each other. Okay, so which one is which? So the semitendinosus, which is this muscle here, is superior to the deeper semimembranosus, which is underneath. Now an easy way that I remember this, because I had trouble trying to remember this, is a membrane covers. So I think, okay, the membrane is going to go on bottom, semimembranosus is on the bottom, 
And then the superficial one is the semitendinosus. If that helps you remember it, use it. Okay, so here are all of the hamstrings together. We have our medial hamstrings, which is our semitendinosus, superficial, and our deeper semimembranosus. And then our lateral hamstring, which is our biceps femoris, which is the long head, and the short head. So make sure you understand that. So let's do a quick check. Our first question is, which one of the following muscles does not originate exactly at the ischial tuberosity? Is it A, the long head of the biceps femoris, B, the short head of the biceps femoris, C, semitendinosus, or D, semimembranosus? If you said the short head of the biceps femoris, you are correct. Here's the long head of the biceps femoris. Notice that it inserts, that it originates here at the ischial tuberosity. Now the short head originates at the linea aspera of the posterior femur. This is not on the ischial tuberosity. So it is the only one that does not. Because if you look here, semitendinosus and semimembranosus originate as well at the ischial tuberosity. Next question. Which of the following statements is correct? A, the semimembranosus lies superficial to the deeper semitendinosus. B, the semitendinosus lies deeper to the superficial semimembranosus. C, the semitendinosus lies superficial to the deeper semimembranosus. Or D, the biceps femoris is the medial hamstring in the posterior compartment of the leg. Which statement is correct? Very good. If you said the semitendinosus lies superficial to the deeper semimembranosus, you are correct. So the semitendinosus, which is this muscle, is superficial to the semimembranosus, which is the deeper one. And it is depicted really well right here. Here's the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, which is deeper. And last question. Which of the following statements is incorrect? A, the biceps femoris has two heads that form a tendon that insert on the head of the fibula. B, the semitendinosus lies superficial to the deeper semimembranosus. C, the semitendinosus and semimembranosus both originate at the ischial tuberosity and insert on the tibia. Or D, the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and short head of the biceps femoris all originate at the ischial tuberosity. So if you said the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and short head of the biceps femoris originate at the ischial tuberosity, you're correct because the short head does not originate at the ischial tuberosity. It originates at the linea aspera of the posterior femur. It should read, the semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and long head of the biceps femoris originate at the ischial tuberosity. So here we have biceps femoris, long head, originates at the ischial tuberosity. Semitendinosus originates at the ischial tuberosity. And semimembranosus originates at the ischial tuberosity. The short head, however, does not originate at the ischial tuberosity. It originates on the linea aspera of the posterior femur. What helped you the most? What was your biggest takeaway in this video? Let me know in the comments down below. And you have what it takes. Keep on going, keep on studying, keep on being diligent and staying focused. And sooner than later, you will be a massage therapist. I'm so excited for y'all. I will see y'all in the next video. Y'all take care.